Today we are talking about GoPro settings and in particular about the best settings for POV shots. This is the kind of shots you take when skiing, motorcycling or biking. I've summarized all of these activities here in one video because basically the same principles apply to these shots. It's all about speed, a POV perspective, so shooting with a chest mount or helmet mount and sometimes changing lighting conditions. Especially for skiing, this was probably the worst year ever, at least here in the Alps. Nevertheless, I'm optimistic that this will soon change and we will soon be fully active again with our GoPro cameras. And just in case you're new here, my name is Werner, I live in the Italian Alps and on this channel you will find GoPro and filmmaking tutorials. Have fun with this video! Let's start right away with the most difficult decision we have to make when it comes to the optimal settings and that is choosing the right resolution and frame rate. We should consider these two settings together because the available frame rates depend on the resolution. At the same time, the possible settings for the lens, that is the field of view, also depend on the resolution and the frame rate. But we will come to that in a moment. The higher the resolution, the better the image quality. This is especially true for the GoPro. In 4K, the GoPro produces a much better image than in 1080 for example. You also have the option to crop the image in post without having to accept a large loss of quality. For this reason, I opt for 4K for our POV activities. On the Hero 9, 5K would also be available. However, while the Hero 9 delivers the even better image in 5K, the options for the frame rate are very limited in 5K. When it comes to speed and shooting sports and action, I prefer a very smooth image. I therefore choose a high frame rate, and that is 60 frames per second. If you live in the PAL region, that would be 50 frames per second. The footage may not look as cinematic as with 24 frames per second, but you get a smooth and very realistic image. In addition, 4K60 offers you another advantage. If needed, you can create a slow motion of 40%, which can be quite interesting in certain action-packed situations. I would recommend 4K60 as the default setting, but there are a few things I would like to show you in this context. When you set the resolution, you will see here in the first line three possible resolutions with the aspect ratio of 4 to 3. A normal video file has an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. Nevertheless, 4 to 3 can be interesting especially for POV shots. With 4 to 3 you get an image that has an extended field of view at the top and bottom. This means that the image can show more at the top and bottom than a 16 to 9 shot. The disadvantage is that you will find black bars on the left and right side of the image. So if you want to get a typical 16 to 9 video format, you have to crop your shot in post. However, you have the flexibility to move your image up or down. This is especially interesting for POV shots. Unfortunately, it often happens that the camera on the helmet mount or on the chest mount is not optimally positioned. The image contains too much of the horizon or too much of the road. With a 4 to 3 shot, you can adjust this a bit afterwards. Unfortunately, you can't combine 4 to 3 in 4K with 60 frames per second. You have to reduce the resolution to 2.7K to be able to shoot with 60 frames per second. So now I wouldn't necessarily recommend you always shoot in 4 to 3, but you should know the option so you can decide depending on the situation if you might want to shoot in 4 to 3. There is one more case where I would deviate from the combination of 4K60. And that is in low light conditions. In most of the cases we're discussing today, light won't be the problem. But of course it could be that you're riding a motorcycle in the evening or at night for example. In those cases I would recommend a lower frame rate of say 24 frames per second because quite simply more light can reach the sensor, which is an advantage in low light conditions. Now let's take a look at the field of view or the digital lens as GoPro calls it. For our POV shots, whether skiing, biking or motorcycling, I prefer the standard wide field of view. It's the only way to get that immersive look. Linear can certainly be interesting for cinematic shots. But for our intended use, you should choose the wide lens. The only alternative I would really recommend is super view. With super view, a 4 to 3 shot is taken. The areas on the left and right side are then stretched outwards by the camera to get the typical 16 to 9 format again. Similar to the 4 to 3 shots, the advantage here is that the field of view is extended at the top and bottom. And this is, as I said before, especially advantages for POV shots. However, there will be relatively strong distortions on the left and right side. By moving forward quickly though, these distortions are not as noticeable. Therefore, Superview is definitely an interesting alternative for our purpose. Unfortunately, the same limitation as before also applies here. Superview cannot be combined with 4K60. If you still want to shoot with 60 frames per second, you have to reduce the resolution to 2.7K. Now, if you use our default setting of 4K60 and white as field of view, there are two stabilization methods available, on and boost. In the case of our BOV shots and the activities we are talking about today, you will mostly be using a helmet mount or a chest mount. 
When using such a mount, in most cases, it is sufficient to set the stabilization to on. With on, the image is already excellently stabilized. Boost also leads to a relatively strong crop, which I generally want to avoid. By the way, if you are interested in what mounts I personally use and what my favorite GoPro accessories are, check out the links in the video description. Scheduled capture, duration, hindsight, time and zoom feature are not important today. Before we take a look at the Protune settings, I want to address the topic of exposure. Imagine you're going on a long downhill ride with your bike and there are some dark passages in the forest or you're going through a tunnel. The camera will always try to adjust exposure. That means in a dark tunnel it will increase the exposure. This can lead for example to the light at the end of the tunnel looking completely overexposed and only appearing as a white spot. If you want to avoid these situations, you should lock the exposure. The best way to do this is to tap and hold on a corresponding area on the display. A white square appears. The camera will now calculate exposure based on this area. When you are satisfied with the exposure, tap on the white square again and the lock will appear. Then confirm the setting in the lower right corner. Now you have fixed exposure and it will not change during the recording. As I said, you don't always have to do this, but it can be useful depending on the situation. Now let's take a look at the protein settings. If you set the bitrate to high, the camera's bitrate will be increased to up to 100 megabits per second. This should improve the image quality. However, you will need much more storage space, as the files can be up to twice as large, depending on the resolution and frame rate. I've done several comparison tests, also with shots with a lot of motion and many small details, as well as in low light and with color grading, and there are hardly any visible differences. It is clear that if you always want the absolute best image quality, you should probably choose high. But in most cases, you will not see any difference. Because of the much larger file sizes, I recommend using standard as bitrate. Under shutter, you can set the exposure time manually. This only makes sense if you're using ND filters or maybe in low light. By default, I use the automatic. If I want to fix the exposure, I rather use the technique I showed you before. Under exposure value compensation, you can set whether the camera's automatic should expose a little darker or brighter. It makes sense to set a slightly negative value of minus 0.5 for example. This prevents the camera from overexposing bright areas in the image. In post, it is easy to brighten up shadows. However, areas that are too bright and burned out cannot be saved. This is about how cool or warm the image looks. Depending on the type of light, the white balance changes. The goal should always be that the white actually looks white. The automatic of the GoPro works very well here, so I leave this setting on auto. If you take a longer shot, for example a longer ride with the bike, you can also set the white balance manually. This prevents the camera from changing the white balance during the recording and ruining the shot. For daylight, for example, a value of approximately 5000 or 5500 is recommended. The ISO value in simple terms defines how sensitively the camera reacts to incident light. The higher this value, the brighter the image. At the same time, a higher ISO value results in disturbing image noise. This image noise is very strongly visible, especially from 800 ISO. Therefore, I would set ISO minimum to 100 and ISO maximum to 400. Only in exceptional cases, I would use a higher value. The GoPro was simply not made for low light situations. You should take this into account when shooting. Sharpness is a very important setting for me. High sharpness doesn't mean more detail. Rather, the camera adds digital sharpness to the shot to artificially enhance the image. However, the image doesn't get a high quality look. I use a sharpness of low here. This makes the image look very soft. I then add some sharpness in post. If you don't want to edit your footage, I would use medium here. The GoPro delivers a nice saturated and contrasty image. But since I prefer to color grade the footage myself, I need an image with little contrast and saturation. This gives me more flexibility in post. In addition, a flat color profile increases the dynamic range. For these reasons, I use flat as the color profile. But be careful in low contrast situations, for example when skiing on a cloudy day. In these cases, I would advise against using a flat color profile, because the compression can cause details to be lost. If you're not editing your videos, you should set the color to GoPro. Raw audio. Here you could have the camera create additional WAV files to better edit the sound. I set raw audio to off. The GoPro has three microphones. Depending on the wind situation, one or the other microphone could be deactivated to reduce the wind noise. You can turn this feature on or off here. I leave the setting at auto. So let's briefly recap the most important settings. 4K for a beautifully detailed image, 60 frames per second for natural smooth shots with the option for slow motion. White as the default field of view. Super view or a 4 to 3 shot for an enlarged field of view at the top and bottom. 
Here you may need to reduce the resolution to 2.7K. Use the exposure control feature to lock the exposure where needed and when the lighting conditions change. For Protune, Bitrate Standard, Shutter Auto, Exposure Value Compensation minus 0.5, White Balance Auto, ISO Minimum 100, ISO Maximum 400. Sharpness Low or Medium if you don't want to edit your videos. Color Flat or GoPro if you don't want to edit your videos. Raw Audio Off and Wind Auto. With this, we would have our GoPro perfectly set up for our POV activities. If this video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback. If you want to support this channel, you can also use the link in the video description and buy me a coffee. There will be more GoPro tutorials, so stay tuned and see you next time.